Since the beginning, man has looked into the awesome reaches of infinity and asked the eternal questions. What is time? And what is space? What is life? And what is death? Through a hundred civilizations, philosophers and scientists have come with answers. But the bewilderment remains, for each human soul must find the secret in its own faith. The tender and haunting legend of the portrait of Jenny is based on the two ingredients of faith, truth and hope. There is such a portrait that hung in the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and there was such a girl named Jenny who sat for it. So much is truth. For the rest, science tells us that nothing ever dies but only changes, that time itself does not pass but curves around us and that the past and the future are together at our side forever. Out of the shadows of knowledge and out of a painting that hung on a museum wall comes our story, the truth of which lies not on our screen, but in your heart. Portrait of Jenny. New York is a cold place in the winter. It was no warmer in the winter of 34. Yet there is a type of suffering for the artists which is worse than anything a winter or poverty can do. It is more like a winter of the mind, the dreadful feeling of, of the world's indifference. My courage had all run out. What can I do for you? Well, uh, you can buy one of my pictures, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yes, but of course we buy very, very little, almost nothing. Times being what they are. However, let me see what you have. Hmm. Hmm. Landscapes. Mostly. Yeah. Too bad. These are some things I did up at Cape Cod. Uh, that's the fisheries at North Truro. Mm -hmm. Land's End? Mm. Yeah, landscapes. <laughs> Here's some sketches of the city. Uh, that's the bridge. Yes, it, it, it's a good bridge, but I just don't happen to like bridges. They come in every day, but it doesn't. <laughs> oh, Spinney, <laughs> you startled me. This is my partner, Miss Spinney. I don't believe I caught your name. I didn't say it. My name is Evan Adams. What are you so defensive about? I'm not. I'm Evan Adams. Perhaps it would be better if you weren't. You might eat more. Don't be in such a hurry. Let's see what you've got here. There's nothing there that'll interest you or your partner. You're probably right. I'd like to see what interests you. Sit down, Adams. You may not sell anything, but at least you'll rest. I'd advise you to sit. You paint a nice flower. Thank you. Do you ever read Robert Browning? Long time ago. Do you remember his poem about Andrea del Sarto, the perfect painter? Proportion, anatomy, color. He had everything and nothing. He painted a perfect hand, while Raphael drew a formless claw. But Raphael loved his work. Poor Andy del Sarto. I think I get your point. There isn't a drop of love in any of these. Oh, really, Miss Spinney? Don't be soft, Matthews. I'm an old maid, and nobody knows more about love than an old maid. What's the matter with you, Adams? We have to learn to care deeply for something. We'll take the flower. Huh? I happen to have a weakness for flowers. He doesn't do them too badly. Give you twelve dollars and a half for it. Is that the argument? There's no sale. There's no argument. You pay him, Mr. Matthew. Have your change of a dollar. I haven't got a dime. You'll owe us 50 cents. <laughs> if you want more flowers, I've got a carload of them at home. I was afraid of that. Good day. Thank you very much.
Good day, Miss Spinney. I don't think you really wanted the picture. If I hadn't wanted it, I wouldn't have taken it. You have beautiful eyes. Goodbye. Oh, dear. I'm afraid that picture isn't worth more than a couple of dollars. No, but Adams is. Yes, but we're supposed to be in the business for profit, Miss Spinney. <laughs> I thought. I bought this for myself. Oh, it's wonderful what a little compliment can do. My first in 20 years, Mr. Matthew. At last, I had a little money in my pocket. But I think I was a little lightheaded from not having had enough to eat. Suddenly, I had the awareness of something extraordinary. The city sounds were muted and far away. They seemed to come from another time like the sound of summer in a meadow long ago. It belongs to me. Isn't anybody here with you? No. Why should there be? It's getting pretty dark. Oughtn't you go home? Well, I don't have to go home yet. Nobody's ready for me. Anyway, you're with me. I'm Jenny. Jenny? Jenny what? Jenny Appleton. Father and mother are actors and actresses. They're working down at Hammerstein's Victoria. They do juggling on a rope. <laughs> Did you say Hammerstein's? Uh-huh, why? Because it was torn down years ago when I was a boy. <laughs> you must be thinking of some other place, because I was there yesterday. Well, now, really, I... Now, let me see your pictures, mister. Adams. How do you know they are pictures? Oh, I just know. Those are awful little windows for such a big church. They have to be little. There's so much wind in Cape Cod. I don't like it. It scares me. The wind? No, the black water. There should be a lighthouse out there in the ocean. Yes, there should be. How did you know? I don't exactly remember. Someday I'll show it to you, out there on the rocks, the lands and light. But you said you didn't remember. I don't, I just know. I wish I liked your pictures, but I don't. That's what everybody says, that's why I can't sell them. Maybe you shouldn't paint places. Why don't you paint people instead? Cecily Brown's home is full of pictures of people. Who's Cecily Brown? She's my best friend. I go to school every day now, but only in the mornings. What do you learn? Well, yesterday we learned about the Kaiser. He's the king of Germany. He was, a long time ago. You're wrong. Cecily Brown's father's in Germany now, and he sees him all the time. Well, he was... He says the Kaiser rides around on a white horse, and he likes to fight. I can fight, too. I can fight Cecily. She's bigger, but I'm stronger. I can fight her good. I thought you said Cecily Brown was your best friend. She is. It's fun to have somebody to play with. Don't you have anybody to play with? <laughs> no. Well, I'm afraid I have to go now. Well, it's a little lonesome here all by myself. So I'll walk away with you if you don't mind. I know a song. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to. Where I come. taught you that? Nobody, it's just a song. Do you know the game I like to play best? What? It's a wishing game. I'll tell you what I wish most. What do you wish? Well, first you have to close your eyes and turn around three times. I 
wish that you would wait for me to grow up so that we could always be together. But you won't, I guess. Well, I can't talk to you anymore. Goodbye. I'll get your parcel. Oh, thank you. Funny kind of a kid. Jenny! Is that you, Mr. Adams? Yes, Mrs. Jeeks. You always come in so extremely quiet, I can hardly hear you, Mr. Adams. So thoughtful of my other tenants. I didn't want to disturb anybody. Of course not, a fine gentleman like you. Would five dollars do for a while? It won't do, but I'll take Hope it. Hope I'll have some more for you soon. You'd better see that you do. I don't suppose you'd be interested in another one of my sketches until I... Oh, no, my bathroom's full of them now. Where would I put another one? In my parlor? No, I wouldn't expect anything like that. You certainly have a way, Mrs. Cheeks. Play with him like a cat with a mouse, and then you pounce. But he is attractive, isn't he? And a gentleman besides. That's what makes it so hard to throw him out. Oh, but he's an ornament to your house, Mrs. Cheeks. Just can't understand a man fiddling away his time, just painting things. Of course, he did shovel some snow to pay part of last month's rent. Painting things? Women? Women in the... Mrs. Bunce, we agreed that he was a gentleman. A gentleman just don't paint women in the. No, of course not. Somehow the tune the little girl sang stayed in my mind. And I thought of the last thing she'd said to me about waiting for her to grow up. But people can't wait for other people to grow up. There was something different about that child. I wondered if my pencil could catch it. Slept it all the way. It's gone forever, and a grand morning it was, too. Well, I worked pretty late last night. I didn't get to sleep until dawn. Had your breakfast yet? Well, no. Now, how about having some lunch with me? No, no, I'm not going to eat on you, because you have to work too hard for your money. Wait a minute, I've got some money of my own. No kidding. <laughs> I sold a picture yesterday, $12 and a half. Well, what do you know? So today you're having lunch on me. It's a great pleasure, Mac. Just come along a minute while I fix up the hack, and we'll soon be on our way. You know, Gus, I can't get you at all. Why should you care if I eat? Well, maybe I don't like to see people go hungry. Let me put it this way, Mac. I got a lot of respect for a guy that's doing what he's got to do, even if maybe it's killing him. Now, you want to paint pictures, so you're going right ahead doing it no matter. I like that, Mac. You know, most of the time, a fellow's got the idea that there's nothing much to life, except getting through it as easy and as comfortable as he can. Making a quarter here, a dollar there. Eating, sleeping, and dying. And then a fellow like you comes along who's not thinking too much about them things. It starts you wondering. Wondering if maybe you're not missing something. Hop in. I'd like to recommend my friend Moore and his corned beef and cabbage. It's almost like home. You couldn't pay me to eat anywhere else. Oh, sorry, Mac. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well. Well, taken to wearing scarves. Hmm. That isn't mine. I found it. Belongs to a little girl I met in the park. Yeah, pretty big scarf for a little girl. Funny kid. 
She said her parents were acrobats at Hammerstein's Victoria. Yeah, Hammerstein's was torn down years ago. Of course it was. But she said she was there yesterday. Yeah, well, that's kids for you. Always dreaming up something. Well, what do you know? Hmm. Sarah Bernhardt's coming to America for a farewell tour. Sarah Bernhardt? Have you gone crazy? Well, that's what it says here. Sarah Bernhardt, distinguished French tra tragedienne, arrives next month. Let me see. Well, that is what it says. Say, this paper's dated 1910. 1910? Where'd you pick up an old paper like that? A little girl in the park had it. Her scarf was wrapped in it. Gus. Read that. Read that ad. Hammerstein's Victoria. Eva Tangway, the American comedienne. Will Rogers, expert lariat thrower. The Appletons, novelty high wire act. Well, what about it? It's just what she said. I don't get you. She said her name was Jenny Appleton. So? Now that I think of it, she... She wasn't dressed the way the kids are now. Oh, look, Mac, you're not trying to believe this kid, are you? <laughs> of course not. Okay, okay, eat your lunch. As my mother used to say, if you got too little in your stomach, you got too much in your head. <laughs> I see. You think I'm imagining things. Oh, no, Gus. She was real enough, all right. I saw her. What's more, I could draw her for you. Hi, Gus. Hi, Mac. Uh, how are things? Meet my friend, Mac. Mac here is the owner of the joint. Hello, Mr. Moore. Everything all right, sir? Couldn't be better. I'm glad to hear you say it. And you, Gus? Everything all right? Sure, sure, I guess so. What do you mean, I guess so? Anything wrong? No, no, I guess not. Is the food all right? Sure, sure. And what's griping you? Well, I kind of hate to say this, Mac. You're not the sort of man uh, I like to hurt. But um, if you don't see me around for a while, uh, don't be surprised. I thought I might start eating down at Nick's for a change. Nick's? Yeah. Nick's? And what's wrong with Nick's? No, nothing the matter with Nick's. I suppose, if you like that type of place. So you're going to start eating down at Nick's. It's a nice day for heaven. Oh, beautiful day. It is, and more. So you're going to start eating down at Nick's, eh? Yeah, I thought I might. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's all kind of people to make a world. All kinds. And some of them hasn't a trace of friendship or loyalty. Well, uh, a fella likes a change once in a while. A change from what? Well, it's uh, this room, the, the joint. It, it's dark in here, Mac. Dark? Dark? Hmm. You ought to brighten it up. Brighten up the joint, Mac. What would you want me to do? Oh, well, I don't know, Mac. I hadn't got that far. Suppose I could hang his three picture here and there. You know, it's a crying shame you couldn't have a whole scene painted right on the wall. Of course, I know that can't be done, but... Why can't it be done? Didn't you ever hear tell the murals? Murals, eh? Pictures painted onto a wall. Is that right, Mac? Is it possible to paint a picture right on the wall? Of course it's possible. It's done all the time. See, you dumb ox. As a matter of fact, this wall would lend itself to a mural very nicely. Well, look, what are we thinking of? Here we got one of the grandest artists in the whole world sitting right at the table. And why don't we ask him to do something? You could squeeze it in, Mac. You could squeeze it in between all your other uh, uh, commissions. Well, uh, I don't know. You could drop in here now, say around noontime or supper time. Uh, it won't cost you a cent. Aye. Excuse me a minute. I've got to post this. Lost him. Had him and I lost him. Let it go, Gus. Don't say any more about it. Up the rebels! Up the rebels! Three years, Mac! Come on! Mac, did you ever see me I never did, and I've often regretted it. Here's what you should do, Mac. Right over the bar here. A painting of Michael Collins. Big Collins himself, and he leading his men into battle against the might of England. Just a minute, Gus. Why, man alive would be the greatest thing that ever hit this town. Moore's Alhambra would be the rallying place for every Irish patriot to come to. Why, man, you wouldn't have standing room at the bar. And it wouldn't cost you a cent. Mm, it sounds kind of interesting. Now, here's how I see it. Or should I say how my friend Mac here sees it. It's early dawn on a small hill in Ireland. And there. There on a carpet of shamrock, under an old elm, stands McCullens. 
leaning on his gun waiting for a zero hour. And all the Murphys and Flanagans and O'Shea's are waiting with him. In a brief moment, Vic himself will lead him in a battle and lead him to victory. Up the rebels! Up the rebels! You've got to pay it, Mr. Arnold! You've got to do it like Up the rebels! Up the rebels! Up the rebels! Up the rebels. <laughs> This sketch of a little girl I saw in the park. It's very good, isn't it, Miss Finney? Yes, I think you have something there, Adams. Do you know why I like it? Why? There's a quality about the girl that reminds me of uh, long ago. And there ought to be something timeless about a woman. Something eternal. You can see it in all the great portraits of the past. They make you feel you could meet those women anywhere and be inspired by them. Well, then, Mr. Adams, I tell you what I'll do. I'll take that sketch. I'll give you $25 for it, and I don't care what Miss Finney says. I'm not going to say anything. Now, Adams, you can stop feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, no, things are looking up. Uh, getting three meals a day for painting a mural, and now $25. Thank you for a sketch. A sketch? Well, uh, thank you. Where are you going now? Nowhere, anywhere. Where I come from, nobody knows, and where I'm going, anything goes. What's that? Oh, it's a song that little girl sang in the park. Well, if you don't know where you're coming or going, perhaps you'd like a cup of tea. Well, I don't care if I do. Come along. Thank you. See you later, Mr. Matthews. Oh, yes, as you say, Mr. Matthews. You know, I haven't been ice skating since I was a kid in Maine. You were brought up in Maine? South Paris, Maine. Pretty swanky, huh? It was a nice little town. Rivers, lakes, mountains. My father ran the general store until he died. My mother died a couple of years later, and, and I worked myself through three years of college, and then I... <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? I think it's interesting. I want to ask you advice about something. I don't feel sorry for myself the way you said. Uh, I'm facing a very practical problem. Oh, that is something. An artist facing practical problems. Oh, not the kind you think. I don't mind being hungry. I don't even care about having to die to the landlady. But, well, I know every artist who ever amounted to anything went through a lot more than I have. But they knew they had something. It'd take a lot of beating when you know that. But who do I think I am? Why should I believe that of all the thousands of struggling artists, I'm one who has something worth saying? Oh, relax, Adams. Come and sit down. It irritates me when you go on like that. You know, something about you appeals to me. I can't imagine what. I think you're like the bow I wanted when I was young. When I was doubting myself. Not you, too. Even me. Look what it's brought me. Just a frustrated old maid lecturing a frustrated young artist. Miss Penny, what shall I do? I think the sketch shows you what you can do. All you need is a little inspiration, any inspiration. That little girl in the park. Well, I guess that does it. How's about you and me taking a twirl on the ice? Oh, go along with you. Thanks, Miss Finney. so much taller. <laughs> well, maybe you didn't see me so good before. No, I, I, I'm sure you've grown. Of course I have. I'm hurrying. Don't you remember our wish? Sure I do. Let's skate. Let's go a little faster. <laughs> I feel so funny, too. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have something here, viewers. 
Oh, what a pretty scarf. It's in the parcel on the bench. You said it was yours. Did I? Well, if I said so, it must be true. I'll tell you what. Why don't you keep it for me until I grow up? Then I'll have one more reason to grow up fast. All right. I owe you a favor anyway. You do? Why? I did a little sketch of you the other day, and I sold it. Oh, I'm glad. The man who bought it told me how to paint portraits. What do you think of that? Well, who would you paint, Mr. Adams? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe. Will you let it be me? <laughs> who else? Whee! I'm going to have my picture painted. Won't Emily be mad? Emily? Emily's my best friend. She had her picture painted by Mr. Fromkiss, and I said you were going to do mine. How did you know that? Well, I wished it, and then I closed my eyes and turned around three times. But Emily still said you wouldn't paint me, and so I slapped her. Emily? I thought it was Cecily you always fought with. Cecily? Oh, you don't mean Cecily Brown, do you? Well, she moved away to Boston three years ago. I thought I told you. No, you didn't. That's funny. Well, doesn't matter. Come on, let's skate. Well, I'll have to be going pretty soon. Oh, don't go. How would you like some hot chocolate? Oh, I love hot chocolate. Get it right over there. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, Jenny, uh, where do you live? I'd like to come and see you. Well, I... I don't think there's any place you can come and see me yet. Huh? Why? Oh, it's just the way it is. When will you start my portrait? Oh, well, whenever you're... Whenever your parents will let you. Where are they now? At Hammerstein's. Oh, well, they're still at Hammerstein's, huh? Eh? And they've got wonderful new tricks, way up on a high wire. Sometimes it scares me to watch them. Of course, that's silly. That's why they're so famous. They scare everybody. Yeah. I'd like to see them. And then I could ask that permission you to come and sit for me. Why don't you take me down to Hammerstein's to see them? Oh, yes, do let's go. I can get us in free. Could you go to the matinee Saturday? I think so. Where will we meet? Well, let's meet... Let's meet here in the park. At that bench where we met before. I'll be there at 2 o'clock. At least I'll try. That was wonderful chocolate. Thank you. Well, I, I really must go now. Must you? I hate it to stop. Because when will we ever have it again? Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Looking for someone, Adams? I was just watching the little girl I was talking to you about. I know now that Spinney didn't see Jenny, but all I knew then was that she kept a watchful eye on me as though I were a patient that needed watching. I was happy when I realized it was Saturday and I could scarcely wait to find out what Jenny was going to present to me as Hammersteins. But at last, there was no sign of Jenny. Apparently, she had forgotten. On impulse, I decided to find out for myself what I could about Jenny's parents. Well, I had a bet with a friend of mine. I wonder if you can help me. Uh, you remember the old Hammerstein Theater? Do I remember it? What? You came to the right party to ask about Hammerstein. Well, I claimed it used to be right around here somewhere, and my friend thinks... Uh, your friend loses. Hammerstein's used to stand right there where the Rialto is now. Yes, sir? I just want to ask you one more question. Do you remember the, the Appletons? The Appletons? They used to have an act. Trapeze. It's trap. Seems to me. Look. You go over the Rialto and ask old Pete. He's a doorman or something. He used to play Hammerstein's. Pretty good song and dance man in his day. He might know. Thanks a lot. Appleton. Appleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were the four Appletons. Uh, that was in 1902. They were clowns. They were very good, too, like from Vienna. This was a high wire act. Husband and wife, 1910. Uh, then there was uh, Mike and Pat Appleton, Irishers. Uh, they did some songs and uh, Peter Petering. Uh, 
Yeah, that was 1904 or 1905, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 1910. Please, uh, let me do it my way. Uh, I have to go backwards and then start from the beginning, you see? Uh, otherwise, I will not remember, and I don't like not to remember. Then, then I think I'm getting a little uh, old, you see? I'm sorry to put you to all this trouble. No trouble at all. I have a very good memory, huh? It's only sometimes that I don't remember things very well. She, uh, Clara Renault. Clara who? Clara Morgan. She was with a wardrobe at Hammerstein's. Uh, everybody went to her with his troubles. Uh, those colored people, very wise people. Well, they know what trouble is. You know how I can find her? Sure, I know where you can find her. Well, where does she live? 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 Oh, uh, 332 East uh, 135 Street. Thank you very much. Good memory, no? Just one. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. They were all wonderful acts. For me, they had more glamour than anything you see today. You sort of felt as though you knew all the artists personally. Ah, here it is. These are the Appletons, Mary and Frank Appleton. This, this little girl. That's their daughter, Jenny. Their daughter? Yes. Isn't it possible that this child is their granddaughter? Oh, no. I knew Jenny when this picture was taken. She was a darling little girl with big, sad eyes. She used to come backstage and sit on my lap. I used to give her rock candy. Do you know where she is now? No. I lost track of her after her parents were killed that night on the trapeze. That was many years ago. The wire broke. Jenny was in the theater looking when it happened. Are you sure you don't remember what happened to her? Well, it seems as if I remember some talk about her aunts wanting to put her in a convent. Jenny wasn't a Catholic, but her aunt said a convent was the best place for a girl to be. Thank you very much, Mrs. Morgan. I, I appreciate your giving me your time. Thank you, Mr. Adams. It isn't often I have a chance to share my memories. I do hope you'll find Jenny. She was a dear little girl. I hope so, too. Thank you again. That night, everything seemed like a dream to me. The towers of the city, the myriad lights. But now I knew that Jenny was not just an imaginative child, not just a child denying time and reason. Instinctively, I found myself approaching the bench in the park, Jenny's bench. And as I did, I was conscious of an unaccustomed atmosphere, as though time were melting with the snow. Were the sobs that I heard part of the illusion? <laughs> What are you crying about? Father, mother. Father, something's happened. They've had an accident. I knew it would happen. The wire broke. I knew it would happen. I was always scared it would happen. And tonight... Tonight? <laughs> oh, Jenny, I, I know how you feel. I know how much it hurts, but it, it isn't hurting them. Now, please try to think of it that way. But they did. We, we all die sometime. I love them. They love me. And you mustn't be too unhappy. They wouldn't want you to be, would they? Would they? No. No. And they told me once, they, they said if anything happened to them, I mustn't be unhappy. Because they were doing what they wanted to do. And, and if they, if anything happened, it would happen to them both at the same time, the way they wanted. You see? I shouldn't cry, I should no. They wouldn't like it. 
they died the way they wanted. That's right. So I guess I'm only crying for myself because they're gone and because I'm lonely. No, 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 don't, Jenny. But maybe I won't always be lonely. I don't know why, but I don't think I will be lonely very long because I, I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying fast now. My aunt is sending me to a convent and... Convent? Do you want to go? Of course I do. After that, I'll be grown up, don't you understand? <laughs> no, Jenny, I, I, I don't understand. I wish I did, but I don't understand any of it. Each time I see you, you've, you've changed. You're older. You talk about things that happened... Well, that happened long ago. Did they? Sometimes I kind of think that, too. But maybe that's because I have to find something. But find what? I'm not sure. But I think I'll know someday. I think I'll know when I find it. Do you know what? I think you'll know, too. I hope so. You'll wait for me, won't you? You'll give me a little more time. All right, Jenny. Listen. It's the stars. Can't you hear them? Listen to the stars coming out. From the mystery which surrounded Jenny, my thoughts turned themselves away. It was not in my hands. Nothing was in my hands. Any more than I could bring the spring nearer before its time, or keep the winter from clinging to the earth with a bitter grip. Skipper! Hello, Mr. Matthews. He always runs away when we get near the park. Thank you very much for catching him. I didn't catch him. He just ran right up to me. Oh, that's a great compliment from Skipper. He doesn't usually take to strangers unless he thinks they're in trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble could he have sensed about me? I suppose most artists go through something of the sort. Sooner or later, it's not enough for them just to live and paint and have enough. Or nearly enough to eat? No. Sooner or later, they want recognition. They want to sell their work. Good men, even great men, have failed to do that. But I... I don't think that's all that's bothering you. Mr. Matthews was right. There was something else. My memory was beginning to play tricks on me. I was seized by memories so urgent that they were more real to me than what was before me. Everything reminded me of Jenny. Where I come from, nobody knows, and where I'm going, everyone goes. Finally, spring broke through. I tried to work, but mostly I was content to do nothing. I knew in my heart that I would never be anything until and unless Jenny returned. I needed to tell someone, and who was there to tell but Spinney? Maybe I will paint only one important painting in my life, but that much I know I can do. The portrait of Jenny? Yes. It's the first thing and only thing I've ever been sure of in my life. You couldn't do it without her. Of course not. I suppose she doesn't make another appearance. Then I can't even think of that. I didn't realize how much you needed her. It took you a long time to find something to bring your talent to life. You couldn't find it, so... So you think I created her because I needed her for... An inspiration, perhaps. Maybe you really saw her. Maybe you didn't. What's the difference? As you grow older, you'll learn to believe in lots of things you can't see. 
to get that canvas ready for her. Come in. Hiya, Mac. Gus. Yeah, it's a grand day outside. For New York. What you doing in here? Preparing a canvas for a portrait. You don't tell me. So that's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. Da da di ti ti di ti di ti ti di ti di ti ti. Speaking of paintings, uh, I dropped in a Moore's yesterday. I know. He's upset because I haven't finished the job. And after all, you made a deal, Mac. I let him down, huh? Well, Mick Collins is a little upset too, Mac. Waiting to lead his men into battle and having only half a leg to stand on. You tell more, I'll be in soon. I'll finish it somehow. Sure, sure. Gus, don't, don't think I'm ungrateful. It's all right, Mac. As my mother used to say, if there's stardust in your head, sure, there's a jumble in your soul. to take place. I knew in my heart that I was worthless. Suddenly I felt fear. The world seemed curiously empty and silent. One note would bring it all to life. One note would make an instrument of it. But apparently that note was not to be played. The world of my art was to remain an empty box. First year of college at the convent. Wonderful dress. Do you like Lovely. it? It's our Sunday dress. Oh, look, you can see the bridge from here. Eben, I, I've thought of you so much. It, it could fill an eternity. What did you think? About how wonderful it all is. How I've searched. Searched. And now, how we'll be together always. I'm almost sure. Do you know what Emily wants to know? What? When you're going to marry me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Evan. I know I'm not old enough yet, but I will be soon. What's that? That's a sketch of Radio City. Radio City? I've never heard of it. Like it. Mm -hmm. That's strange. What's the matter, Jenny? That's Land's End Light. That's right. Land's End Light. How do you know? Have you ever been there? I, I don't know. I think. It's an old deserted lighthouse up on Cape Cod. I did that sketch several years ago. Are you 
makes me unhappy. Well, in that case, we'll just put it aside. Look, Jenny, the canvas. Canvas? The canvas for your portrait. Your portrait. The one we planned. Evan, you're going to do it. I was so sure you'd be here one day. I haven't been able to do anything else. Sit over here. Over here? Please. Right there where I've dreamed you'd sit. Now, the girls will be so jealous when I tell them. Turn your head the other way. Some of my friends are taking the veil next Sunday. There. It'll be lovely to watch. Will you come and see it with me? I'd love to, Janet. Now, please, hold still. Turn your head. There. A few of my classmates will be leaving then, too. I hate to have them go. Jenny, your hand. Turn your head. Hold that. Eben, promise you won't forget me. I was afraid, afraid you might not be here. I told you I'd be here. We'd better hurry if we want to see the ceremony. the world is, Edmund. The sun goes down in the same lovely sky, just as it did yesterday and will tomorrow. When is tomorrow, Jenny? Does it matter? It's always. This was tomorrow once. Where I come from, nobody knows, and where I'm going, everything goes. I've heard that somewhere. Of course you have. You sang it to me that first day in the park. Did I? I'd forgotten. The wind blows, the sea flows. God knows. I think he knows, Evan. So this is where the master works. Well, there's much of a place. Uh, sit over here, Spenny. Yeah. Of course, it isn't finished yet. Don't be coy. Let's see it. Well. What do you think? 
Having pictures for many years. And in my business, it's always a dream that someday you'll come across, shall we say, a, a great picture. This is, I feel now, a sort of fulfillment of mine. Oh. He means he likes it. I'm glad. Do you remember my saying there ought to be something eternal about a woman? Something not of the present or of the past? Well, here you've caught it. It's the face of that same little girl. Yet what you've seen in that face is without age or time. Well, it hasn't finished. It really isn't, I... Take it easy, Adams. It's a great picture. Carried forward on a wave of exultation, I worked eagerly to complete the portrait. The face framed in its dark hair, the brown eyes tenderly dreaming. I began to realize that I was caught by an enchantment beyond time and change. I knew at last that love is endless, and today's little happiness only part of it. Somehow I knew I'd find you here. I've looked for you here so often. I had to see you tonight. You know, I, I've just graduated from college, and... It's wonderful. Now we can be together always. Well, I, I'm afraid we'll have to wait a little longer. You see, my aunt is ill, and she wants me to go away with her for the summer. When do you have to go? Tomorrow. I couldn't go without saying goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, it'll only be for a few months. Anyway, we, we have until the morning, and I think a little more. Charlie, I'd be lost without you. No, no, don't say that, Evan. Both of us be lost. Look at the moonlight on the water. It makes a pathway across the river. The Jersey Hills are over there, aren't they? In the distance. You say it sadly, Evan. Aren't you happy? I've been thinking. No matter how far away that kind of distance is, it can be reached. Over there beyond the hills, one can drive to it. North among the pines, eastward to the sea. It's, it's the only kind of distance I ever knew anything about before. But now I, I feel it's another kind of distance, a crueler distance, a distance of yesterday and tomorrow, and it frightens me. It frightens me that there's no way to bridge it. There is. At this moment, I know there is. I want it to be forever. It will be. Have faith. How still it is. Listen. The whole city sleeping. No one left in the world but us. No one but us. Look, the little boat put its lights out. The night's over, it's tomorrow. Jenny, I'm not going to think of this summer or the future, though. I'll leave that to you. Why we met, how it came about, I don't know. I know we were meant for each other. The strands of our lives are woven together, and neither the world nor time can tear them apart. Oh, Eben, I wish you'd finish my portrait. People can know what lies ahead. I mean, what's going to happen to them? You know how you feel sad about things sometimes? About things that have never happened. 
perhaps they're the things that are going to happen to us. Perhaps we know it, and we're just afraid to admit it to ourselves. <laughs> I guess that's silly. I guess it's just my funny mind. Jenny, I... Jenny. Jenny, Jenny. Oh, hello, Eben. Hello. Where are we? Together. <laughs> Poor darling. I guess... You must be worn out. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. beautiful things in the world. You're the most beautiful thing in the world. But, Eben, these pictures of yours, of the sea and Land's End Light, each time I see them, my, my heart seems to stop. Curious. Tell us, suppose it is a forlorn sort of place. Yeah. Well, don't let's talk about it anymore. Tell me about Paris. Did you study there? Yes, indeed. Oh, Evan, I wish we could be there together. It would be such fun. We'll do it, Jenny. I'll take you to the Luxembourg. And to the fair at Fontainebleau. Oh, yes, Evan, yes. We'll go out to the forest of saint cloud in the spring and drink new wine under the trees. Oh, Evan, I feel as though we were there already. As though we'd been spending our whole lives together. Oh, Jenny. What is it that makes a man and woman know that of all the other men and women in the world, they belong to each other. And is it just chance they're being alive in the world at the same time? You think it's possible that there might have been others in other times whom we might have loved and might have loved us? Oh, no, no others. Among all the people who lived from world's end to world's end, there's just one you must love, one you must seek until you find him. My darling. I must go, Evan. Please don't go, Jenny. I don't want to, but we'll meet again when summer ends. Are you sure, Jenny? I don't know quite where. The wind blows, the sea flows. Oh, Evan, I want to be sure. Tell me you're sure. I'm sure, Jenny. I'll get my things. Oh, Evan, what a lovely scarf. Sure is, Jenny. A present for me? I thought you'd like it. I've been saving it for a long time. Ever since we first met in the park.
In the afternoons, the sun slanted lower over the city. And sometimes at evening, a wedge of wild duck wavered southward against the Manhattan sky. Summer turned away into fall, but Jenny did not return. I felt a dreadful loneliness. Where was she? Yonder, yonder was the home of my sweetheart. Yonder, yonder, t'was so long ago. I remember my lover and the kiss of no other, no other love. Yonder, yonder was so long ago, was so long ago. I suppose I ought to be minding my own business, but you're carrying quite a load, Mac, all by yourself. Gus, you don't understand, and... Max, supposing... Now, remember, I'm only supposing, supposing but... what, Gus? Well, supposing she didn't ever come back. She's got to. Can't be that I... Yeah, but if, if something happened to her... Don't you have to go on living, pal? Don't you? You've never believed the whole thing, have you, Gus, about Jenny? Well, now, don't be putting words in me Doesn't mouth, matter. Right? Doesn't matter whether you believe. It doesn't matter whether anybody believes, because... I know. Sure you do, sure. But weren't you telling me uh, she goes to a convent? She's not there anymore. She graduated. Oh. Yeah, but the, the sisters are great ones for keeping in touch. Yes, she liked the sisters. There was one who was a favorite. Well, why don't you ask her? Jenny said she felt closer to the truth there. Look, Mac, I'll drive you out first thing in the morning, if you'll promise to get a good night's sleep. You'll have to let me owe you for the ride, Gus. Your money don't signify, Mac. As my mother used to say, if you've got friendship in your heart, sure you don't... What was it my mother used to say? I don't know what I expected to find at the convent. I knew only that it was there that Jenny had found some inner truth. It was there that she had said to me, I think he knows Evan. For the first time since I had last seen Jenny, I had a feeling of not being alone. A feeling that the world and Jenny and I were one. What if for a while we had lost our way? Yesterday rose again ahead of us. We had found beauty together, and we could never lose it. What was it you wished to see me about? Well, I wanted to ask you about a girl who graduated from here. I thought possibly you might have some information as to where she is. I might. We often keep in touch with the girls after they leave. What was her name? Jenny Appleton. Jenny Appleton? Yes. You remember her, don't you? Yes. Yes, I remember Jenny very well. Even though she was not of our faith, Jenny was one of my favorite pupils. A lovely girl with a strange spiritual beauty and a gentle kind of sadness that always troubled me. I think that describes her perfectly. Have you any idea where she is? Why, Jenny died. When? Years ago. Oh, I'm afraid I shot you. Well, no. We obviously aren't speaking of the same person. Did you know her family? No, I just know they were killed in an accident. A wire broke? They were trapeze performers? Yes. Well, I'm afraid it must be the same Jenny Appleton. Her aunt brought her to us shortly after her parents' death. She stayed with us until she graduated. Then her aunt came and took her up to New England for the summer. We corresponded a great deal would you care to have me read you one of her letters? Please. Won't you sit down? Mm. 
I was so touched by her letters that I saved them. This is the last one she ever wrote to me. My dear sister Mary of Mercy, we are returning very soon. The summer has been a very long and lonely one. How I want to see you again and sit and talk to you about all that has been worrying me. I know you tried to teach me how beautiful the world is and how it keeps on being beautiful every day, no matter what happens to us. But sometimes I have the dreadful feeling that this beauty will never be complete for me, that I will never find someone to love who will love me. It's a thought that terrifies me, dear sister, and I need your comfort and your wisdom to help me. Your loving Jenny. That was the year the terrible tidal wave hit the New England coast. October 5th. I remember it well. I always offer my communion for Jenny on that day. I afterwards learned that Jenny was in the habit of sailing out every day alone to a little cove near an abandoned lighthouse. Glancet Light. During one of those trips, the wave struck. That was the last anyone ever saw of her. Plans and light. That's where I'll find her. But Jenny is dead, Mr. Adams. You must accept that fact. Hard as I it won't may accept be. it. Don't tell me she's dead. I held her in my arms three months ago, not ten years ago. I love her. I want her back. What vision has been vouchsafed you, I can't say. But don't doubt the ways of Providence. You must have faith. We know so little, so very little. I don't mean to be abrupt, and I'm grateful for your kindness. When did you say that wave struck the coast? October 5th. And today is? October 1st. That leaves me four days. But, Mr. Adams, that October 5th was many years ago. Are you so sure? You say we know so little. You say Jenny's parents were killed. I found her sobbing on a bench the night it happened. You say she was a student here. I visited her here. You say she went to New England with her aunt. I was with her just before she left. Then how can you say it all happened many years ago? Yes, we know so little. And yet now, I know a little more. I know now the pattern of Jenny's life. But I also know that I am part of it. She herself said that strands of our lives were woven together and that neither time nor the world could break them. This I have faith in. Thank you, Mother. I must hurry now. Thank you for your time. Sir, what's wrong, Adams? I'm going away, Spinney. I don't know for how long. Here's my portrait of Jenny. Will you store it for me until I come back? Of course. Where are you going? I think I know where she's going to be. I've got to be there waiting for her. A little place up on Cape Cod called Land's End. Well, Adams, <laughs> where have you been? I've got a lot of commissions for you. In that case, perhaps you'll advance me $100. Ah, uh, well... Give him the $100, Mr. Matthews. Uh, yes. What's the matter, Adams? Is there something wrong? Never mind, I Just pay you, Mr. Matthews. Uh, as you say, Mr. Finney. Thank you. Thank you, Spenny. Thanks for everything. Bye, Mr. Matthews. Goodbye, my boy. Have a good rest. We'll do big things together later. Paint me a little church while you're there. A little white church with a big steeple. You don't get yourself drowned in the sea. What makes you say that? Oh, men do such foolish things. I'm afraid of the ocean. You're tough. Sea wouldn't get you. Tough ones drown, too, you know. Bye. the storm yet. What storm is that? The hurricane that's coming up. <laughs> no hurricane coming up around here, young fella. Fair weather. 
That's what it says. Right there. How far in advance would the barometer show if one were coming up? Far enough. Didn't show far enough when we had that hurricane back in the 20s. I heard about that hurricane. Happened just about this time of year, didn't it? Yeah. By golly. Come to think of it, it was October 5th. I remember. Because October 4th is my birthday. Today. I'd like to get out to Land's End Light. You know where I can charter a boat? Land's End Light. Can't think of any reason why anybody would want to go out there. Never mind my reasons. Do you know someone with a boat? My pa's got a trim little boat. That's fine. Would you mind taking me to your pa? No. Come to think about it, I don't think Ma'd like him to rent a boat. Well, I reckon you better go down and see Eek. I've heard tell of how he rents his boat sometimes. Well, I find Eek. Oh, it ain't hard to find Eek. He's always sitting in the same place. Where's that? Well, I'll tell you now. You go down to the jetty and ask for an old codger named... Mighty nice of you to rent me a boat. Uh, you could go in there buy a new one for what you're paying me. Uh, and what I don't see is how you figure to get it out tomorrow in all this muck. Ain't a breath of wind stirring. There'll be wind, all right. Plenty of it. Maybe. Never been too sure about them things. Not since that hurricane we had back in the 20s. What about the wave? I heard something about a great wave. Great wave? Hey, uh, there was a wave, all right. Sometimes I think I never seen it, that I just read about it, like something in the scriptures. It come up out of the sea like a mountain, coming, coming toward the land, like the day of judgment. You didn't happen to know a girl, uh visitor who was caught by the wave. Her name was Jenny Appleton. You know, it's queer you should ask me that. I used to rent her my boat. I should never forget it till the day I die. Did you know her? Yes, I, I, I knew her. Pretty little thing, wasn't she? Such big, sad eyes she had. Big, sad eyes. There's something about her that seemed to come from fur away. What happened exactly? Where was she? when the wave struck. Well, she reached Land's End Point. That much is certain, because I found the bow of my boat tied to the wharf there. Well, anyway, what was left of it? Let me ask you something. If she had made the lighthouse, she might have been saved. Isn't that so? Yeah, but she didn't make it. No, I know. It was a pretty tough climb up them rocks. And all that wind, especially for a female, I suppose it would. Alone.
pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. I'll never let you go again, never. It's been so long, Evan. Let me look at you, Jenny. Jenny, the wave is coming. It's all right, whatever happens. Whatever happens, it's you I want, Jenny, not just, not just dreams of you. Evan. Please believe me. The wave will strike again, and soon we can have a whole life band we together. We have all eternity together, Evan. Can't you see? We were lonely, unloved. Time made an error. But you waited for me. And so we found our love. And now we must lose it? No, no, Evan. Now we're just beginning. There is no life, my darling, until you are loved and been loved. And then there is no death. We must reach the lighthouse fast. But you're finding nothing, Evan. Nothing.
Cutter. A shave will make you feel better. Morning, Captain Cobb. Morning. Splinny. Hello, Adams. What are you doing here? Well, frankly, I was worried about you. I thought I'd come up and see how you were doing. Captain Cobb kindly let me visit you. So you see, we're both his guests. It's nice of you, thanks. Oh, tain nothing. But let me tell you, young fella, it's a mighty lucky thing you told Eek where you was aiming to sail for. But tain't likely we'd ever have been able to find you at all. No sir, above. Did they find anyone else? There weren't nobody else darn fool enough to keep a boat out in that blow. But, but her boat. What she saying? She, she had a boat. I don't rightly know what you're talking about, young fella. But there weren't no other boat at all but out from any place around these parts that day. And you can bet your boots on that. Can't figure out why he ever rented him her boat. You saw Jenny again, didn't you, Adam? It's awful. Oh. I tried to hold on to it. The wave. Take it easy. At least you saw her again. Yes. I'm glad you at least believe about Jenny. Yes, Adam. You, you, you do, don't you? You believe it. That's all that matters. found you on the beach. Yes, Benny. I saw Jenny again. You mean this is Jenny? It's all right. I haven't lost it. Everything's all right now. Real. Oh, she must have been. Well, what does it matter? She was real to him or she couldn't look so alive. How very wise you are. Oh, Eben, is it really of me? I think someday it will hang in a museum and people will come from all over the world to see it.